everyone, this is Gali. welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to learn how to draw them facing the front view. This might not seem like a very easy thing, because, well, the head shape changes a lot, but I have found many references that could probably help us when trying to make this happen. So uh, the first thing we have to do is find the shapes of the head. And in this case, I've gathered many references, as you can see. One of them is a figurine of the dragons you can find in art stores and some toy shops. This one. It's facing the front, but if you have the physical figurine, you can turn it around and then you can see the different angles. This other one is Galidor, my dragon. This is a reference made by Sky Sealer on DeviantArt, and she made it look really cute facing the front he has a square shape in his face and then you can see that i have many other different drawings i have some for example by a person in deviantart skull seal artworks it's a very funny smiley dragon also facing the front this is a little sketch i made and then we have this one and you can see that they all have something similar they have horns they have obviously eyes and spikes or ears or something coming out of their uh, face and in this case you can see real life animals like an alligator or turtle iguana i have a bearded dragon right here a komodo dragon a snake they're all reptiles, but you can also use different animals to make the faces. It doesn't really matter, as long as they're facing the front. So as you can see here, I made some simple shapes based on the drawings, all the pictures that I have on the left. You can see that some of them have more triangular faces, others have more square-like or rectangle-like faces. I made one based in a mixture between this one, the Komodo dragon, and the spikes of the other dragons. But what I want you to see is that they all have something in common. And we're going to draw on it so you can see. Make it bigger. So what happens with all of these is that they have their eyes almost either on the front or on the sides but facing the front because they're predators and what happens with predators is that their eyes they look really mean when I paint them with red <laughs> but you see that predators have their eyes almost always like that facing the front and now they all look really evil but they're all looking kind of like that because they need to hunt and when they hunt that's what they use and yeah maybe red was a very mean color but as you can see, I tried the same with mine, having the eyes on the side. And then what we follow is the nose. And the nose is obviously always on the front, but as you can see, for example, the alligator has very close nostrils. An iguana has them to the side with a rounded shape. The turtle has a more triangular or diamond-like shape nose. The bearded dragon has more kind of a rectangle shaped nose. The Komodo dragon also has like a very rounded or square-like uh, form of the nose. And the snake as well has more like a rectangle. And you can see, yeah, they're all different, but they're all like little figures. The thing is you have to think of the shapes. What I suggest is always tracing on top of a, a photo or a picture so you can understand what it is you're drawing. Tracing on top of pictures for learning and reference is not a bad thing, so don't be discouraged from trying. Because that's the only way we can learn is to reference from reality. So you can trace the shapes that you see on top of the, you know, the creatures. See how different their shapes are? and how their mouth wraps around the face. 
In this case, for example, it goes around like that. So it always goes around, but you can see it in the front. Think of Smaug, the dragon from The Hobbit. When he's looking at the front, you can also see his mouth going to the sides, like this one. So when you want to make your own dragon, you can always, with references, trace on top of references as well, as long as you credit who you are referencing. We can see, for example, in this dragon, he kind of has a diamond-like shape. This is great because it's a sculpture, so that means it's 3D and you can probably change the angles, just like you would do with a figurine. Before you put all the details of the horns and the spikes, try to understand why you're putting the shapes you're putting. For example, the horns, right? They go on top of the head, then the nose. Facing the front, the nose won't look long, it will look like a flat shape, but you have to see the shape. For example, this dragon reminds me of the turtle shape, but the nostrils of the dragon are different, and they could probably be kind of like an iguana. The eyes are big, but they're also facing the sides, but at the same time, he could be looking at you like this on the front, right? So that's what we do when we want to learn something. We take the shapes of that and then make our own. We're going to go back with a drawing I had of this guy. And I'm going to, to draw on top of this. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to grab the references or grab your own references and try it. Making the body face the front is the same thing that I'm doing with the head. You can grab other animals such as, I don't know, horses, tigers, wolves, and draw their bodies facing the front. The thing about figurines, in this example, for example, is that sometimes their anatomy is not very correct. But we can always, the more we practice, the more we can correct. So in this case, for example, he has a circle at the base. And then he has more like a diamond shape of the mouth. And then the eyes, as you can see, the same thing. These ones are more front-facing. You can also trace the body to get an idea, for example, where the ribcage would be. But I do encourage you to learn animal anatomy because then that way you can always uh, know what to adjust. For example, if I want the dragon to have his paw on the air, or in the air, sorry. You go and, I don't know, you can adjust. No? If you know anatomy, you can do that. You can change what you see to a different thing. To understand what you're doing, it's not just enough to copy what you see. You have to learn what's behind it. Because sometimes you can see this and you might not know where the leg connects to the body or where the wings go, or anything like that. So you can always go to the internet and find more references, or have your own figurines, take pictures of them, and draw them in different angles. Because dragons are creatures that don't exist, so you don't have references for them. Which is kind of a problem when you're trying to draw something, is that, well, you don't know what to look at when you're doing it. So now that we have learned like kind of the basics, we can try to make our own. Either just the head or the body. We can go to Google. And as you can see, I'm trying to practice my French, but we're going to see, I don't know, a front body of a tiger. We have this reference. One of the first ones. Or this one, for example. This one is good. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it here. We're not gonna trace on top of this this time. Okay, so for a dragon, we might want a bigger face. So of course he has a face, right? And then a bigger or longer neck. It's facing this, like this way. But we're gonna try making it facing this way.
then as you can see the tiger is a shorter body and this tiger is his body is kind of going this way but what we can learn from this for example is how the hands or the paws go how this part here separates them he has his little legs like grabbing the rock I say little legs but they're usually big so in this case for example you see the difference is that the head is very close to where you see the back in this case it's not because we're making a dragon So what we have is like the body, it might go this way, the rib cage, and then have the legs facing this way. So because this is a dragon and not a tiger, he might want to have horns, and the mouth would be wrapping around. Not like the tiger, whose mouth is just here. In our case, it goes longer. And then the wings. The wings, I have another video for them. But you can always reference different animals or angles. They're one of the most complicated parts to draw, in my opinion. So don't worry if you don't get them easily because they're not easy to draw there's lots of things that you have to think about when you're making that maybe just want the tail to go behind him kind of like that but because we're not really focusing on the full body what you can see is that once you have your references set up you can have fun creating different shapes of your dragon. And I would suggest that you make different dragon shapes facing the front, just the heads. So you can practice with your heads. And once you have the heads done, you can go forward and maybe try doing different front view, but with the whole body, which is one of the most complicated angles because, well, as I said, we don't have reference for dragons, right? We have to create them ourselves. In this case, my dragon has ears, horns, and a long neck. You might want to add some scales. You can also grab more references. You don't have to stick to the one you chose, like you can have many more. And that's even better because the more references you have, the better it will be. You will have to understand why, for example, you're doing the pause the way you're doing, or the angle, or how the muscles connect. And all that takes time, and even the most experienced artists always have to look for reference, because we don't learn everything immediately. And sometimes we forget what things look like. So this is just one example of a pose. I don't have to finish the wings, but you, you get the idea. You can change everything. You can change the pose, you can change the face structure, even any details you want, you can add, you can change. There's always like the possibility of using your imagination on things. In this case, for example, the neck of my dragon is facing another way, like he's going that way. And then his body wouldn't really be facing the front, he would just be facing kind of the side. But the face is facing the front. So the more interesting you want your dragon pose to be, try to find reference of different animals and understand why you're doing it. That's the tips I can give you. The more you understand, the more you can create. And that's all for now, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you can get more notifications of when I upload my new videos. The next one will come soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.